Welcome to the Steeples or Demo. I'm Mandy, and in this episode, we'll show how we can use the interactive convolution demo application on deeplizard.com to further our understanding of the convolution operations used in neural networks. In deep learning, convolution operations are the key components used in a convolutional neural network. These convolution operations map given inputs to outputs using filters and a sliding window. We have an entire episode dedicated to explaining the convolution operation and how it's used within neural networks. So check that out for a more fundamental understanding of this operation. But for now, we're going to show how we can use this interactive convolution demo application on deeplizard.com to further our understanding of this operation. So we're here on the application page now, and we're showing just the top portion of the application at first, and then we'll scroll down to see the bottom portion in just a moment. This application is going to allow us to see the convolution operation in action on a given input and see exactly how the output is derived. So here we have the options that we can work with within the demo. And the first option is to toggle the demo on or off of full screen. And then the second option is to choose which data set we want to work with. Now we can choose what type of digit we want to see the example occur on. So since we're dealing with MNIST, we have the options of digits zero through nine. So let's just choose nine for this example. Now we know that convolutions make use of filters. And when we have a convolutional layer in a neural network, these filter values are learned by the network during the training process. So these filters can be learned to detect edges or certain shapes or corners or even more sophisticated things like faces or body parts or certain types of textures. So for this demo, we have a list of different types of filters that we can select to see an example convolution be performed with. So we have three different sets of edge filters here. So these each detect different types of edges. So here we have one way of detecting top edges with this particular type of filter here. And then here we have another way of detecting a top edge and yet another way of detecting a top edge. So these are all filters that do the same thing. So detect top, bottom, left, and right edges. However, they're just implemented with different values. And we'll see exactly how this makes sense whenever we choose to work with these different types of filters in the demo. But for this first example, we are going to just choose this left edge filter as the filter that we'll use on our image of a nine from the MNIST dataset. So now we have configured all of our options and now it's time to actually go through the demo with our example. So here we have our input image of a nine from the MNIST dataset. And each of these small squares here in the input represent a single pixel with the pixel value embedded right inside. And we can see that we have this first block of three by three pixels highlighted in this box. And this box of pixels is blown up here at the top of the page. Now, for the filter that we chose, recall we chose the left edge filter. And that is represented here. And by the way, we're assuming a filter size of three by three. So that's where we get this three by three block here. This is our left edge detector filter. Now, as we know, the convolution operation takes the element wise product of each of the pixel values from the input with each of the values in the filter. And then after it's accumulated all of the element wise products between these two matrices, it then sums them all together to get the final output of the operation. And that sum is what is illustrated here. So by hovering over this first pixel, for example, we can see that this pixel is the input pixel from the top left corner of our three by three block of our input. And it is also represented up here. So we're multiplying this value in the top left corner of our input by the value in the top left corner of our filter. And we can see that highlighted here. So we do that for each of the input values and corresponding filter values. And then we take the sum of them all 
until we reach the final output from this convolution operation on the given 3x3 input. And then we're going to store this output in the output at the bottom of the page here that's going to ultimately represent the entire image that has had the convolution operation applied to it. So then if we just scroll up a bit and hit the step button, then we can see that in the input we have moved over by one pixel to the right and now our three by three block of input pixels has shifted. So this is assuming a stride of one. So we're moving over to the right by only one pixel at a time. So again, we have this input represented at the top here and we take the sum of the element wise products between this input and our corresponding filter. So these filter values will not change over the duration of the entire example. And then after summing, all of these together, we get the final output, which is stored down here. So we can see that all of these pixel values are zeros. And so we are going to have the same output here since we have all of the same input. So we can hit play on our demo, which will run through these operations for each of these pixel values in a quick fashion. And we can choose to pause it once we get down to some of these pixels here that are actually making up the digit. All right, so we're starting to get some new values, so we'll hit pause. In the output space here, the orange pixels or the red pixels represent positive activations. So this is everywhere that we see a left edge, because recall we're dealing with a left edge filter here. The deeper the red color, like the one I have selected here, the more positive the activation is. So we can see that it makes sense that we have detected a left edge here. So that corresponds right over here to these pixel values. This is where a left edge on the nine in the image has been detected. Again, also over here, we have a strong left edge detected, which is represented with these dark and deep red colors. And that is over here in the input, we can see that we definitely have a strong left edge here. And as the colors fade from this deep red to lighter red and lighter orange, these are still positive activations for the left edge detector. However, they are just not as strong as these. On the other hand, we have these blue colored pixels and these pixels represent negative activations. And we can think of these negative activations as being the exact opposite type of pattern being detected as the positive activations. So actually these blues are patterns that are detected as right edges, being the exact opposite of that as left edges. And as we now should know, convolutional layers in a convolutional neural network are typically followed by the ReLU activation function, which will output the max value between the input and zero. So this here is the output of the convolution operation, which would then be passed as input to the ReLU activation function. So everywhere that we have a positive value, these are values that are going to be kept by the ReLU activation function. Whereas everywhere we have a negative value represented as a blue pixel, these are going to become zero after applying ReLU to them. So ultimately we would be left with the output being all of the orange and red pixels here, which are the positive values at the end of the ReLU activation. By hovering over each of the values in the output, we can see that they are a result of the values that are being highlighted in the corresponding input on the left, along with the filter being highlighted at the top of the page, which we need to just scroll up a bit to see the whole thing. So now we'll just scroll back up and zoom back out a bit and we'll play the remainder of this demo to see the final output. So we'll hit the play button and our demo will pick right back up where it left off and it will complete and we can see that this is the final output of applying the convolution operation on our input. Now if we change from using our left edge filter to instead using a right edge filter, we should expect the output here to be the exact same with the exception that all of the blue pixels will change to be orange. 
So all the blue pixels that are currently negative pixels should change to be positive values with the orange and red color. And vice versa, the orange pixels that are currently positive values will change to be blue pixels with negative values because we are going to be applying the exact opposite type of filter to the same input. So we should just see this switch occur. So let's choose the right edge filter now, which will reset the demo and then just play through the whole thing and see what the output looks like. <laughs> So the output is indeed what we'd expect. And again, this is as a result of having our filter flip values here to be opposite from our left edge detector that we had earlier. So now we flip back to the output from the left edge filter. So we can indeed see that the orange and blue pixel values have just traded places. And just to show another example, a completely different one, we can switch to the Fashion MNIST data set and we have these different options of different pieces of clothing that we can choose. So we can just use this current t-shirt that is selected and we'll apply, let's apply this Pruitt top filter to detect the top edges and we'll run through this demo. So we can see that the top edges are being detected by being highlighted with the bright orange and red colors here, and that the bottom edges are being shown as the exact opposite type of activation with these blue pixel values. So in the input, it makes sense. We definitely have a top edge here. We see that this is highly activated with these bright red and orange pixels. We have a top edge here uh, for whatever this graphic is on the shirt. So we can see that top edge represented here. Then similarly, in an opposite fashion, we have bottom edges here at the bottom of the sleeves of the shirt. And we, we can see that represented with the blue negative value pixels. So take your time playing with the various examples in this demo on deepblizzard.com so that you can truly further your understanding of the convolution operation. Hey, thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. To see more content from us, check out our second channel called Deep Blizzard Vlog on YouTube. And be sure to check out the corresponding blog for this episode on deepblizzard.com for additional resources. And while you're at it, consider joining the Deep Lizard Hive Mind, where you'll gain access to exclusive perks and rewards. Thanks for contributing to Collective Intelligence. I'll see you next time.